some things to fill you in on. Um, there's probably some other footage in front of this from a couple weeks ago, around Easter time maybe. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I've got on my computer. Whoa, that's a good jump, Land. You lost your bag! I know. Meanwhile, he hasn't done one. He hasn't sacrificed <laughs> it's mostly this way. No, let him look. <laughs> Leo was so excited to get out first and then he heads that way down the driveway. Yeah. There's 105 eggs, so get looking. 105? Yeah. Running is allowed. There's still going to be like 70 left. <laughs> <laughs> Big, big, long, long. I can see like three of them from where I'm standing. What are we doing, Leo? I'm just gambling and I hate I'm just, just gambling. <laughs> just gambling. Yeah, um, I'm just gambling. Yeah, I'm just gambling. 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 I got it! Oh, I didn't get the bell. Oh, so that's a lot of coins. Oh, yeah, I did! I got the bell! Again! Again! Yeah. It just keeps going until it's all the oh there we go. <laughs> That's crazy. I got ear infection. You have an ear infection? I got it the other day. Yeesh. Okay, I'm to clear it up. We're at my stepdad's house. Real, and he has these okay. <laughs> really old slot machines. Also, no? I gotta show them how tall you are. Come on, child. He's taller than me. Five eight. Let's go. Yeah, I'm five six. I'm shrinking. How tall are you now, Lan? Uh, four eleven. I think I don't know. You're not four eleven. I don't know what I am. I don't know. You're, you're probably taller than great grandma. <laughs> you're not four eleven. If you're this close to me, that is not four eleven. Well, yeah. about it. Into it we can discuss this later you don't want to talk about it in front of yourself not right now no <laughs> it's not embarrassing but i just feel like it is a little embarrassing <laughs> why is it embarrassing cody i'm speeding that place was called bastard pies it's a pizza place i love that there's so much stuff down here we're driving through the town where i grew up because we just drove past my new job it's like how close to Bruce's house? Like my stepdad's house, like maybe 10 minutes, not even. So it's really close to my family. So we're driving through my old like stomping grounds where I went to high school and stuff. Cause that's where we're moving back to, which makes me a little nervous. Like it should. It should. <laughs> I, not that I'm like not where I thought I would be, but like I don't want to run into some of the people I went to high school with. They weren't good people. So like why, why would I want to hang out with them? Or see them but or associate with them. associate okay so once we drop Kennedy off we will discuss what I want to discuss uh, okay okay <laughs> we don't even have good lighting now but that's okay Cody made a comment the other day I hung up some photos in the bedroom of me and the cats and one of them was when I first got the girls so it was <laughs> five years ago and they were like on my shoulder and he looks at the photo and he goes, I wouldn't have been attracted to you five years ago. They said, I don't think I would. I don't think I would have been attracted to you five years ago. And the funny thing to me was, like, first of all, it's kind of like a backhanded compliment. Uh, <laughs> the funny thing to me was, is we met eight years ago and hooked up eight years ago. It was on a flattering photo then. <laughs> I don't know how else to do it. But my mentality was that you, you're, it's not that your face looks slim or whatever, like you look better 
mature. I am I am a lot more mature and put together than I was five years ago. I absolutely you am. You had a baby face back then. I, I don't Very think I had age. until honestly, until about three years ago when I left my old job, mm. I don't think I had fully like I, I I've developed since then. Mentally, physically, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. I've lost weight, I've gained muscle, I've become healthier overall. Your like, confidence is up. My confidence is up. Yeah, I've changed a lot in those three years, so <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I just thought it was the funniest thing, and now I keep razzing him about it. I'll be like, oh, was that five years ago when I wasn't attractive to you? <laughs> There's always gotta be something. Yeah. What do, you, <laughs> what do you have on me? See, that's the thing, though, is I don't harbor this stuff. I'll just be reminded of it. You're like, oh, you're doing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. I can't think of it at the time. But I know there are things. Oh, yeah. There are ones that are going to be like, are you doing the thing again? <laughs> well, I started freaking out this morning about something. And last night we had a discussion about my depression meds. And how I don't like the way I feel when I'm on them because I have no feelings. Yeah, I think it And so I've been talking about, like, going completely off of them or, like, cutting my dose in half to see if... I want to feel feelings. I want to be able to cry. I want to be able to laugh wholeheartedly instead of just like, oh yeah. Like, you're not. I don't notice that as much, but that's good. The laughing, maybe not as much, but the crying. I can't cry when I'm on those things. And I want to be able to feel that. Yeah. Well, so. Get through some stuff already. I mean, the last two weeks were very emotionally I'm charged. Here. What's happening tomorrow? I'm starting a new job, yeah. Well, like, I accepted the job and Harriet passed away on the same day. And then I had to tell my owner and all of that and get prepared to be, like, out of there in two weeks. Yeah. Well, out of there as much as I'm going to be. I don't know if I fully explained this. I'm going to be working there on the weekends, doing their payroll and their payables. Yeah, just, yeah, just on Saturdays. Uh, sometimes from home when things need to be done during the week um, just until the business is fully closed which sounds like it's going to be at the end of May um, so I will be there to do the back end work keep the business going until it's completely finished so and I guess I guess some people are confused about that too so uh, currently I have a franchise store so that's where I was working, it's a franchised store. So it's individually owned, but it's part of a larger corporation. Mm -hmm. So uh, it ran differently than a company owned store. Mm -hmm. What's happening is the company is coming in, taking over the store. My position does not exist in a company store because a company store does all their accounting through the main office and I was doing it for the individually owned store. They'll bring in their own manager. So me and my manager, we know for sure that there's not a position for us. So we already, like, he set his up to leave at the end of May. I couldn't do that with my position. Yeah, it's a step down. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I'm, I'm moving on. Plus, this is the opportunity for us to move closer to my family, closer to where I grew up, closer to Cody's fan or Cody's son. Yes. Yeah, because your Not mom still mention, lives in I, I drive the distance. That yeah, way anyway. and he lives up there, or he works up there. <laughs> he did live up there until I forced him down to Longview in, in well, we had to November. Sure we, could, we could survive each other, and yeah. so far, so good. <laughs> yeah, we're doing all right. We yeah. have tiffs, for sure. We're definitely we argue it. over <laughs> stupid things. Well, it really is stupid, but to us at the time, it seems very important. Yes, but that's yeah. the thing, though, is you and I will we'll bicker, and then we don't we don't cover it up. We'll just go, "Hey, you're right. I thought about it." You know, it's we can we can. What we, have, thoroughly, we have a very European style. Mind. Yes, but it's just thoroughly explosive and joy like, about us is we can sit there and talk very like. Uh, heated to each other yeah and then we can move on with what we're doing because usually it's over how we're doing something yeah uh, like a, a procedure yeah. and then um about 10 15 minutes later we can come together and be like okay 
this next time we need to work on this. <laughs> Maybe there's a reason that we got the chickens. Because the chickens are not, uh, they're not you and me per se. <laughs> but there's always like, oh, you're doing it that way, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we argued over how to transport the soup today and how to transport the cake today. <laughs> like it was just, it was a lot of just like little nitpicky stupid shit. It is. And I, I realized it at the time too, like, yeah. but we also needed a solution and we couldn't agree on it. Agree. Yeah, we had to go. There was yeah. A... We were like, we were 20 minutes late this morning. Late. Yeah. Only the only person who pointed it out was Josh. Josh. Was, yeah. It's, uh, it's always Josh. <laughs> like, oh, where were you? Like, hey man, just because you want to be a half hour early. But Logan had texted me too. He's like, how much longer? And I'm like, I'm on my way. You guys, I, I hope you see the footage. Our Easter hunt sooner. Yeah. I hope you saw the footage that he is taller than me. Well, they're also leaving for Texas at 2 a.m. Yeah. yeah. So they wanted to get home and finish packing and stuff. And then they hung out there, what, for another two and a half hours after we got there? So well, they hung out with us because we were there. Yeah. I'm not saying they, they wanted to get things going. I know. My sister and her family are going to Texas. They leave tomorrow morning super early and they are um, going to Legoland in Texas. So I think that's really cool. It's a state they've never been to. So That's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited for them. All right, I'm gonna let you drive since I um, talked about the weird thing that you said that <laughs> it didn't make me mad, but it's <laughs> it was just like, what the hell? No, I, I think about it. There are times that it's especially when we started living together where I would be doing something different. You'd be like, why would you do it that way? Why would you think that would work that way? And then later on, you'll do it and be like, are you sure that I'm the only one that forgets and doesn't do things properly? No. <laughs> I feel like Cody takes the long way around everything and I, I'm one of those people that I'm gonna do it the quickest, most thorough way possible. Agreed. Yeah. And yeah. that's fine. That's why I have to stay out of the kitchen when you're making dinner because I'm like, bro, you could have done all of this at the same time. Yep. <laughs> okay, we're seriously shutting up. <laughs> I'm heading to work. It's a Saturday. Uh, I'm going to the tire store. So I started my new job on April 1st and it was a little bit overwhelming because it's it's new. It's, it's processes that I don't know. And the first day I get there and they give me this stack of paper like this big. And she was like, take your time, just get through it. And I was like, okay. So I got through it in about like two and a half hours and they were very surprised. I was like, uh, uh oh, <laughs> like did I do something wrong? And she's like, no, you, you got everything filled out. You passed all the quizzes with 100%. So, like, you did it fine. It's like, okay, cool. So they start training me a little bit. And then throughout the week, um, so in a financial hierarchy or, like, flow chart, the controller is basically the, the top financial person. So there's the controller and the assistant controller, and then there's accounts receivable and accounts payable and a financial officer. So we had all of those people in my department, right? So there's five of us that are in a, a portable next to the business. So that's where I was. And I was in a cubicle on the right-hand side of the building all by myself. A building, it's, it's a small area. What I noticed the first couple days is it's super quiet in there. You guys know me, I came from a hydraulic shop and a tire shop, not used to such silence. So Cody's solution is to get me like some earbuds so that I can listen to music. The problem is my phone doesn't have service there. Like I have very little service. I was able to receive text messages every once in a while, but not very often. So I downloaded some music on my phone and I was able to listen to music with like one earbud in. And I don't know if like some of you also have like ADHD and things like that, but I have a hard time concentrating without background noise. And I know that sounds counterproductive, but if I have something to occupy the rest of my brain while I'm trying to focus on something, uh, that helps me. I've learned that over the years. Uh, when I was in high school, I had to have the TV on in the background so I could actually do my, my schoolwork. Uh, it's just a weird 
weird thing about me. I don't know if anybody else has that. I'm sure there are a couple people that are like that. Um, so anyway, I was making the best of it and I'm, re I'm really putting in the effort, but it was not, it was not going well for me. And after the second week, I was like, I don't, I don't really like this environment. The job was fine. I, I liked what I was doing, but the environment was like slowly killing me inside. Um, it's very hard for me to explain how I actually felt. Uh, I felt very alone and kind of abandoned. So the controller was on vacation the first week that I was there. She was there in, in the mornings for like half an hour and then she was gone. That's totally fine because she wasn't the one mainly training me. It was the assistant controller and another person. And so, yes, they were helping me and they would give me kind of broad strokes on what to do and then they would tell me what I've done wrong. So the only time I was getting spoken to was to tell me what I was doing wrong. Um, and that's a little discouraging, of course, but I'm all about like fixing the mistakes so that I don't make those mistakes again. And with all the little idiosyncrasies in accounting and the things that they wanted, I was definitely missing things. Um, so the she pulled me into the office, um, after in, in the middle of like my second week or towards the end of my second week and she was like hey um, what can we do to help you learn these things uh, a little bit better quicker and I was like honestly written instruction and then letting me figure it out from there would be great she's like well there's no written instruction so you're gonna have to like write it down on your own and figure it out I was like, okay so every time they would train me, I had notes and notes and notes. I, I literally had a whole steno notebook full of notes of like trying to get everything, you know, figured out. Um, and it just, I was having a really hard time getting all of the little things that they wanted done. And so I asked her, hey, would it be okay if I like created this document? And she's like, yeah, whatever you need to do. And just like her attitude towards me was like, why don't you have this already? And so it was very discouraging. <clears throat> so not only was no one talking to me except to tell me that I did something bad, but the way that she did speak to me about it was not encouraging. It was, um, it felt very like, why are you such an idiot? So I was already discouraged and I just, my whole attitude was off. Uh, Cody can tell you, my mom can tell you. She kept asking me what was wrong. I was like, nothing's wrong, mom. It's, it, the, the job is fine. She's like, doesn't sound like you're fine. And I was like, I, I finally just broke down to Cody and I was like, I wake up in the morning and I don't, I don't wanna go there. And it's only been a little over two weeks and I don't wanna go. Like, this is not right. This is, this is not how it should be. This is not, this is not okay. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna, after the second week, I was like, I'm gonna go in with a, with a better attitude. I had the music. I was gonna, you know, make myself documents to record the process so that I had it written down. Um, I, I just I thought it was very weird they didn't have written processes. I know like every time I have went to a job or I have set up a job to be trainable, I have a manual. So I thought that was kind of weird, but it, it is what it is. I, I made my own manual and I was getting there, but it was too much for me. And I decided that it was not the right environment for me. I did not enjoy being in a cubicle. I did not enjoy being somewhere where no one spoke to me all day long. The other two girls were accounts receivable, so they got to work together, but I'm the only one in accounts payable. And so it was, I don't know guys, like, I feel really shitty about it. And when when I went in to talk to her, I apologized and I was like, I'm, I'm really sorry. I thought this was gonna be a good fit for me and it's just not. Um, I didn't blame it on anything except it wasn't a good fit for me. And, and that's truly what it came down to is I felt awful being there. And that's not how I wanna feel. I'm, I'm over 40, I'm 42. I'm gonna be 43 in like two weeks. Maybe three, three weeks. I don't wanna feel 
like that going to work. And because I have options right now, because I'm still working at the tire store part time, I felt I could do this. And I had Cody's support and I had my mom's support. And so I went in and I, I just, I, like I said, I told them the environment wasn't right for me and I'm really sorry that I wasted their time and my time, but we're gonna have to part ways. So I did that and then <laughs> I of course called my mom and I called Cody and I told them that I, I had quit that job and that, you know, I felt, I felt really bad about it. I felt bad about letting them down. I felt bad about not, not finishing something I started. And it, it still feels bad, but I know that it's the best decision for me and for, for Cody and I, because my attitude was completely off and my, my whole demeanor was, was off during this time. Uh, it just wasn't, it wasn't good for my mental health and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. And I think that's okay. And I, this is the part I struggled with because I was brought up that you have a job, you keep a job. You keep a job for as long as you can. That's not necessarily the best thing for you anymore. I've been reading articles about changing jobs every three to five years. If, if you find something you love, of course stay with it. And I, I love what I'm doing at the tire store. And so that's the kind of thing that I want to look for. Um, at first I was like, well, I don't want to just, just work at a tire store. And it felt, you know, sort of below me, but it's not, it's what I actually like doing. I like working with customers and I, I like the environment of working on a team. Um, I, I like the accounting part. Yes. I, I love the accounting part. That's kind of a passion of mine is numbers and stuff, but I can't do that alone. So this has given me some, some opportunity to, to know exactly what I'm looking for and to know what to ask in an interview, to know what to, I want to know what the environment is like. Are you encouraged or discouraged from like, you know, making friends with your coworkers? It seemed like that was kind of frowned upon every time I would try to start a discussion with somebody it just seemed like it wasn't welcome and that was really discouraging I, I I work in a small area with these people I want to know who they are and stuff so I don't know it just it wasn't the right fit for me uh, it was a little too corporate and I kept calling it stuffy and that that's how it felt I did enjoy getting dressed every day because I got to wear a different outfit every day I found out that I really love knee-high boots with some leggings and like a short mini dress or a long shirt uh, I think that looks really good on me and it was really comfortable so I also found out that I can't wear shoes like little Mary Jane shoes you know like like flats that just go over your toes my feet do not like those. My feet swell in those kind of shoes. I need like a structured shoe. So I need more like an Oxford or a loafer or something where my whole foot is in there. I've had feet problems my whole life. So all in all to say that I guess I, I, I failed at trying to go to an office. Um, my mom had been encouraging me to like get a state job or something and just be a cubicle dweller. And I was like, I don't think I want that mom. And this has proven to me that that is not a fulfilling environment for me. And that that's just, I'm not to say that all cubicle dwelling places are going to be the same. I understand that. But I just don't think that type of environment is for me. So moving forward, going back to the tire store full time, they are <laughs> very happy to have me back. Um, I called and told Jane, my, my fellow co-worker, and I could literally hear her jumping for joy. She was so excited that I'm coming back. Um, and we only have, you know, a month and a week or so, or a month and like 10 days 
before their store closes and, and switches hands to corporate. So, you know, I'm just gonna stick it out and then we'll, we'll figure out this adventure together. Why, why are these two going so slow? So that's where I'm at, guys. I <laughs> I hope you guys aren't too disappointed in me for not sticking with the new job, but it was it was killing my soul, <laughs> and it just it was not a good fit. Um, so Monday, I start back at the tire store. No big deal. I was working there like 30, 35 hours a week from home anyway, so. It was not too big of a change. I've been very busy the last three weeks. Um, yeah, I just, I feel really bad about it. So, but I also, like, it's a good thing. And I encourage you to, you know, follow your passions and follow what makes you feel good. A, a job shouldn't suck your soul out, guys. It really shouldn't. And I know that, like, like I said before, I can make any place the place. I couldn't do it with this one. And it makes me <laughs> rethink my philosophy on that because you can't, you can't change an environment that's, that doesn't want to be changed. So I'm back to my regular life for a little while. And then the adventure of looking for a job comes again. Um, I'm probably gonna start looking towards the beginning of May just to like hopefully line something up. Um, I just, yeah, I gotta get, I, I gotta get something. I don't know if I can sit on unemployment for any amount of time. And there's also the opportunity that I could transfer to another tire store in the company. Um, I would want to transfer somewhere either closer to where I live now or closer to where I wanna be. Um, so up north, which is where this job was. Um, so I'm also very thankful that like <laughs> where I was uh, when I quit was literally five minutes from my mom or her boyfriend's house, my stepdad's house. I don't know what to, it feels weird calling him my mom's boyfriend, but they're not married, but like he's been in my life forever. So like we're just calling him my stepdad. Uh, so I was very close to my stepdad's house where my mom was, and so I was able to go over there and get support, and I, I felt an immense amount of support because then my mom talked to my aunt, who talked to my uncle, who called me to check on me. My aunt checked on me. You know, my sister checked on me. My, obviously, I told Brittany about it. She was super supportive, even though she's got stuff going on in her life, and it just, I felt the love and the support and I knew that I was doing the right thing. So here I am, <laughs> three weeks of adventure and I'm back to my normal life. So here we go. And we've got about a month and some time before we're on to a new adventure. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for coming on this journey with me, guys. Uh, this will probably be the end of this vlog and uh, I'm, I'm heading to work, so. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.